Okay, so quick look at the component tray. Right now, this is just the rough layout of what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. So the original plan was to put a power box Mercury on this jet with a built-in gyro. Um, with that, I have to put the Mercury a little forward, then maybe around there. The reason why is because once I have the cockpit tray, the front pilot and this instrument panel, um, I need the vertical space to clear so that it, uh, it sits properly in the fuselage. With the Mercury being back here, then all the power wires and the servo wires kind of get away. Not so much as the servo wires, but some of the wires kind of get in the way with clearing the cockpit tray. So I have to move it about roughly here so that the wires will clear. And then I also have to find a space for the screen and then the on and off switch. Now that's option number one. Option number two is I could go with a PowerBox Pioneer, which then eliminates one extra component, which is the screen. And we can just run the Pioneer here. The nice thing with the Pioneer is that all of my servo ports are on the sides, and then so is my power and the port for the receiver and gyro. And all I have to do is just deal with, you know, finding a location for the switch, and then as far as for the gyro, I can use an iGyro sat, which I could probably mount back here or even further back. And this is kind of how I like to build my jets is having the gyro as close to where CG as is as possible and center line of the fuselage. With the Mercury, with the built-in gyro, it'll be pretty up front in the fuselage. Not a big deal, but it's my style of building. I like having gyros further back, closest to the CG as I can as possible. But you can build your jet however you want. If you want to stick with a Mercury or any kind of power distribution that has built-in gyro, you're just going to have to put your power distribution system pretty far forward because you're going to need the space around here vertically for the cockpit tray. All right, moving on to the landing gear controller with the gear door sequencer on the F-18. So right now, what I have set up here, and this is just to eliminate any possibility of you burning out your um, gear door servo or ripping the gear doors off, um, because these retract controllers with the, the gear door sequencers are not programmed uh, from the factory. So you're gonna have to make sure that the endpoints are correct and it's actually operating in the right sequence. Um, with this jet, the landing gears are gonna extend out and the gear doors are gonna remain open. So you wanna make sure that feature is turned on. So to make sure that, you know, when you cycle the gears for the first time, it's not gonna close the door on you while the gear is down. So you don't rip out your, your landing gear doors. Um, so what I did set up here is that I have the nose gear door plugged in. And then just to kind of get the visual of it, uh, I have the r left mains plugged in to the nose gear port and then I also disconnected the control rod that attaches to the gear door just so that I can see what the landing gears are doing. Um, looking at the gear controller so you have um, three ports basically so how I have it set up is that this top section is for the right landing gear and door and then nose in the middle and then left on the bottom and then as far as your ports you have three ports for your gear doors top is for this section middle for this section and then the very bottom next to your receiver port is going to be for this bottom section here now as far as your buttons and modes mode selectors for each, each independent retracts you're going to press and hold that button Right, and you have like three seconds in the menu to change any kind of mode. So, with the first mode, you're gonna see you got letter B flashing options that you got for this one is just basically just to reverse the direction of the servo. So, you can go either A or B. Now, you want to make sure that the gear door remains open when the landing gear is down. So, essentially, what I'm doing is just verifying to make sure that. Um, this the retract door servo is not operating in reverse so the first mode that you're gonna run into 
is to basically reverse the direction of the servo. All right. The next menu, when you press it again, you're going to have A and B uh, lights flashing, alternating. And this is to adjust the endpoints in the down position of the servo. So I'm going to go back to the menu. Again, you only have three seconds to make any kind of inputs. Otherwise, it's going to go back to uh, normal mode. So I'm going to press it again, alternating A and B. And now I'm going to press and hold the plus and minus button so you guys can see the servo is actually moving. So then now I can adjust the endpoints. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. All right, you adjust the endpoints of the open door position. Once you have, you're satisfied with that, then you're going to hit mode again. This time C and D is going to alternate. And this is where you would adjust the endpoints for your gear door closing. All right. Now the last section or last option, when you press it again, it's going to give you the option of C or D. C is for the gear doors to remain open when uh, the gears are, are down. And then D is going to close the landing gear doors with the gear door, uh, with the landing gears down. So you want to make sure that you're in C or that mode so that the gear doors remain open and it doesn't, so that way it doesn't slam the door shut on you while the gears are down. Okay. So now we got all three landing gears and gear doors plugged in. Let's go ahead and test the cycle gear coming up. And the doors closed. All right, gear coming down. Sweet. So now the landing gears are functioning properly. We're going to move on to the brake controller and then the light controller. All right, so here's an update on the light controller. So right now I've got the landing lights plugged in. Uh, it's Y harness to the retract so the light knows when the gears are down and then our navigation lights to turn the nav lights on and off. And then to the right, you got your uh, power supply. So we're running a two cell light um, lithium ion battery, which is what I'm gonna be running on three of these systems. Um, and then you only have three light leads. So you kind of have to just figure out, plug them in one at a time to figure out which lights they are um, assigned to. So basically for the landing gear lights, um, they're gonna be steadied on. And then you have the option for the strobes to be on strobe one, which is kind of a really slow strobe. And then slope, um, strobe two is more of a, a double flash uh, kind of sequence. And then the position lights, I have those on the wing lights. So pretty much the wing lights are steady on and then the strobe is for the tail. I'll show you guys here in a second once I have everything um, set up, I'll uh, show you guys how it looks and get the camera pointed at the jet so you guys can see how it looks like. So this is kind of just a quick setup of it before I install the Pioneer and then have all these channels routed to their individual ports. So let's go ahead and turn the lights on now. All right, so here is the navigation lights on the F-18. As you guys can see, we got our nose gear light on and then navigation lights are flushing along with our vertical stab. And then I'll show you guys here in a second. All right, so we got our strobe lights on. Now also you've got afterburner lights. I need to figure out why the left nozzle um, is not turning on at the moment. I might have to troubleshoot and follow the wires, but basically it's attached to or connected to your throttle position. So increasing throttle, you'll notice that the LEDs change in color with respect to the throttle position. A nice red amber on full throttle. And then as you decrease power, they kind of just change to like blue. And then, yeah, that's kind of how it looks like right now. I need to troubleshoot why the left 
uh, exhaust nozzle lights is uh, not working, but overall, here is the navigation lights on the F18. So when your gear comes up, the lights on the nose gear turns off, and then when the gear down, the lights turn back on. So that's it for the lights on the F18. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up um, cleaning up some of these wirings, install the middle tray, and then work on the front tray where the Pioneer is going to be installed. So stick around, we're gonna go and move on to the next section of the build. All right, so quick update, turbine is back and it's installed in the turbine tray. And then we worked on the retracts, brakes, and the light controller. The next thing I'm gonna do now is work on the front component tray. Uh, I got the Pioneer kind of mocked up in there for now. Let me try to figure out um, where's a good spot to put a hole so that I can run all these wires through underneath so it's a much cleaner look. Uh, but I think I wanna do first is bring the nose gear up because it does have the nose uh, landing light so I want to see where that ends up so I can figure out where it clears and I have room to um, run the wires underneath without getting in the way of the nose gear um, worst case scenario I'll probably just you know a little cut a little bit of the wood here so that the wires can come out and then we'll just mount it this way um, and then after that I'm gonna work on the power leads for the receiver packs um, and then figure out where to put the receiver and then I think this would be a good spot for the iGyro set to be mounted so I'm gonna get um, started on working on the component tray on the front and then do all our wirings and then we can wrap it up by getting all our connections I already have the ECU uh, lead there um, from the turbine and then we can wrap it up with all of our connections to the receiver pack. All right, so all I'm doing now is just making some uh, adapters for the PowerBox Pioneer. So MPX connector goes to the Pioneer and then XT30s to plug the batteries in. Give you guys a quick look at the setup right now. Pretty much complete with the middle tray. This is just the power lead that's gonna be plugged into the Pioneer up front and that's going to supply power to the lights and then the brakes and retracts. And then there's our Pioneer. And then forward of that, I love using this these lithium-ion batteries. They're small, compact, lightweight, and you get 3,200 milliamps out of them uh, compared to using LiPos. And then for the ECU, 3,300 Gens Ace up front. Now, if it is going to be a little nose heavy because it's larger pack, I do have smaller ones that I can just kind of swap out. So right now, I'm just finishing up power system to the power distribution. And then once I have that done, then I can start plugging in the servos for the control surfaces and then um, work on the uh, control throws and rates. Okay, guys, so the Jet Ruler 2.1 meter F18 is now complete. You guys can see navigation lights are all flashing. We guys give you guys a quick tour of what I did with the internals. Hopefully you guys like it. So beginning with the nose of the aircraft in the battery compartment, we've got our three cell 3340 ECU. And then my favorite receiver packs are these AR Powers uh, 3200 milliamp two cell lithium ions. All right, let's take the Canopy off. Set this aside real quick. Get our cockpit tray out. Show you guys the internals. Neatly laid out. The ECU flashing there. All right, and then we've got our power box Pioneer. There's receiver number two. Then receiver number one is up on the nose. All right. Let me just move this out of the way real quick, show you guys the engine bay. I may need two hands for these latches. Oh, never mind. I got it out. Cool. 
swim in, 140 installed, clean installation in there. And then something that I really like about these navigation lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the uh, landing gears real quick. So you got your navigation lights and then your uh, landing lights under the, the uh, nose wheel. Gear coming up. Cycled properly, bring the gears back down, and then take a look at those landing lights coming back on. Sweet. All right, now moving on to the tail of the aircraft. We got our afterburner lights working properly. So as I advance the throttle, you'll notice the color of the lights will change to full throttle and it'll be a red and then back to idle the blue so let's go ahead and cover some of the control throws on this jet and the setup that i have before the maiden flight so let's go ahead and talk about that now all right guys we are officially build complete on the jet ruler 2.1 meter f18 as you guys can see, navigation lights are all on. I tell you, this jet is beautiful. Very well done by Jet Ruler with this F-18. So now let's get to the technical side of things with the control throws and CG of this jet. So there was a little bit of mixing um, done to this jet. It is flying on ailerons for the horizontal stab with a little bit of ailerons on the on the wings so beginning with your elevator on low rates so the measure before I get started with that measuring your neutral position is on the bottom of the horizontal stab about 55 millimeters down is where your neutral position for your stabs are and then referencing from the bottom of the stab right on low rates it's 92 millimeters of up elevator and then 98 for mid and then 100 on high. Now, as far as for your ailerons, so 79 millimeters for your ailerons deflection, all right, and then 85, and then 89. Now, for your ailerons, though, it's a little different. So, from the wingtip side, it's 3 millimeters on low, 13 on mid, and then 14 on high. And then your rudder basically just set it up as you want right now i have it at 25 percent 50 and then 75. now your flap settings for takeoff it's 32 millimeters of down deflection from the wing root and then 72 on landing cg for this jet is 105 millimeters from the leading edge back and then that'll get you a good starting point for your maiden flight and then you can adjust your CG as needed. So that is pretty much it with the assembly and setup of the Jet Ruler F-18. I'm going to go ahead and do some final touches to this jet, final setup, and then I will see you guys on the runway for the maiden flight.